Phew. Wall Street largely recovered from Monday's sharp downturn uh, today on Tuesday, which is a relief because while we may not have felt that money trickle down on us, gross, we can all feel the negative effects of sharp market falls. The Dow Jones Industrial Average fell more than 500 points after the opening bell today, but swiftly recovered most of its losses. The Standards and Poor 500 and NASDAQ also registered short-lived short losses, possibly portending a volatile day. Wall Street's so-called fear gauge, the VIX index, shot up to its highest level since early 2009. The index tracks overall market volatility. For now, a bullet seems to have been dodged after Monday's uh, Standards and Poor 500 stock index fell more than 4%, the worst since August 2011, more than six years. Uh, Donald Trump curiously didn't brag about that one, interesting. Uh, but you know what really bugs me? When politicians and establishment media figures tout the stock market as an indicator of economic success for regular Americans. Republicans and a lot of corporatist Democrats worship on the altar of the Dow and the stock market and uh, claim that the success of investors is the success for all of us. In reality, just 54% of Americans have money invested in the market, either through individual stocks, mutual funds, or retirement plans like a 401k, according to a Gallup survey in April 2017. That's down from 65% just before the Great Recession, meaning that millions of people have sat out one of the longest bull markets in history. By the way, this was written before uh, this recent downturn. Lower income Americans, many of whom by definition don't have extra money to invest, can't feel the red hot stock market. Stock ownership is just 21% among people with household income of less than $30,000 a year, according to Gallup. The rally is very real for wealthier Americans, 89% of those who make at least $100,000 own stocks. And incredibly, the richest 20% of Americans own 92% of the, all the stocks in 2013, according to research by NYU economist Edward Wolf. Younger people are less likely to benefit from the market's rise. Just 31% of people ages 18 to 29 own stocks on average between 2009 and 2017, according to Gallup. That's down from 42% during the eight years before. By comparison, nearly two-thirds of Americans between 30 and 64 years old own stocks. That doesn't spell anything good, in my opinion, for the future economic success of millennials and you know, my generation. Because as we've learned from trickle-down economics, rich people put their money into the market and I guess that's supposed to give us a boost so we can do the same. That just doesn't happen, as those numbers just showed you. When fewer and fewer young people can invest, that will just increase both the volatility of the market and the wealth disparity in the country, which is already enormous. And let's just say it loud and clear here, right? What's good for the overall economy isn't what's always good for the markets. And what's good for working people isn't what's always good for the markets. The markets are an extremely important aspect of our capitalist economy, but we must we pray to the altar of them above everything and all else? A prime example of why we shouldn't do this is part of the reason for Monday's crash and why it happened in the first place. On Friday, the U.S. Department of Labor released a strong jobs report showing wages rising at their fastest rate since the Great Recession. Then the stock market promptly began to plummet. The Dow Jones fell an amusingly on the nose 666 points, its worst day since the UK's Brexit surprise. Right now, traders seem to be worried that if wages rise too fast, it will cause the Federal Reserve to hike interest rates in order to head off inflation down the road. When earlier this year, the central bank suggested that it would raise rates, much of the market was skeptical, in part because inflation has been subdued for so long. But faster pay gains for workers make it more likely that the Fed will follow through, bec both because rising wages are a sign that the whole economy is heating up, according to Slate, and because employers will ha eventually have to raise prices to keep up with the cost of labor. So in this situation, the traders got freaked out by higher wages for workers and the market took a huge dip, although it was temporary and a backup today. But as Patricia Cohen of the New York Times points out, most economists have actually said that wage increases are an overall good for the economy. 
Opponents maintain that raising the wage floor is a job killer and reduces the number of hours worked. Most of the recent research, however, shows that a moderate increase in the minimum wage has little or no effect on overall employment. Whatever negative effects that there might be, some economists say, are offset by workers' greater purchasing power and revved up economic activity. So politicians, the market is a substantial huge part of the world and the United States economy, and no one is denying that, I get that. But to service it at the expense of all other aspects of our economy is a wet kiss to the wealthy and to corporations because, just as CNN Money explained earlier, the richest 20% of Americans own 92% of stocks in 2013, and I'm sure it hasn't changed much. The market is vaunted and elevated above all other aspects of our economic well-being in our political discourse because it is what is making the money for the people participating in that discourse. Politicians, establishment media alike, and donors most importantly. I would love for an equitable stock market that allows all of us to have, you know, employers that provide us with 401ks and to trade and to buy in, but that's not the economic reality for everyday Americans right now. And all the while, the banks are able to trade with your money because of the fact that President Bill Clinton repealed Glass-Steagall and banks have run roughshod ever since and the Republicans have done an enormous part there too. Only the rich can invest and trade and see the gains, but when the banks take risks, we feel all the losses. Wages and overall economic health are just as important as the stock market, if not more. And it's time that our politicians remove their heads from their donors' butts and started to take that into consideration.